The intake valves on this engine are all yucked up with carbon, and we're gonna show you how to clean them. Shops use specialized tools to remove carbon. Later in this video, we're gonna test DIY methods versus the shop method to see which one gets valves cleaner. Direct injection is amazing technology which allows engines to be more efficient and make more horsepower. Prior fuel injection systems called port injection had fuel injectors located in the intake manifold runners that would spray fuel in with the air that's getting sucked into the engine. This fuel and air mixture getting sucked past the intake valves keeps that valve clean, which is why port injection cars do not have issues with carbon buildup. Direct injection cars have fuel injectors that are located inside the combustion chamber. Since these injectors spray directly into the engine, no fuel washes over the intake valves. When our PCV system recirculates crankcase vapors which have oil in them back into the engine, carbon will slowly build up on these valves. Carbon buildup can cause cold start misfires and they progressively get worse as the carbon buildup gets worse. That's a problem because if you have misfires until your car gets warm, this will be causing unburned fuel to be dumped down your exhaust eventually which will kill your catalytic converter. And if you didn't notice, the reason why they're cutting them out of cars right now at alarming rates is because cats are real expensive. If you would like to know if your engine has carbon buildup inside of it, you can purchase a borescope on Amazon, something like one of these that is about $20 or $30. This will give you the ability to look inside the intake manifold of your car at the valves, or the ones that are least accessible, and that will allow you to see if you have carbon buildup on your valves. To do this, you'll have to either go through the throttle body or take off a sensor and stick it in the hole where that sensor once was. When people find out that they have carbon buildup on their intake valves, they understandably are looking for a cheap and easy fix. We, some time ago, made a video actually testing a cheap and easy fix where you spray a chemical down the intake, which is supposed to remove the carbon while the engine is running and get rid of it. We showed before, and then we showed after that service to show how good of a fix that would be. Psst, it wasn't a good fix. That's the car we're gonna be cleaning later in this video. And the stuff that's on the valves is really gooey and thick and doesn't come off real easy. And the chemical just passing by it is not strong enough to actually remove it, nor would you want all that falling in your engine at one time anyway. This issue is commonly found across a wide spectrum of manufacturers like BMW, Mercedes, Hyundai, Volkswagen, Audi, and even Honda. In the Volkswagen Audi world that we specialize in, this has been a common problem for some time. But it's important to note that some engines have this problem and some of the newer engines do not have this problem. If you have a Volkswagen or Audi with a 2.0T FSI engine or a 2.0T TSI engine, this would have been from around 2006 to around 2014-ish, these engines will have that issue and it's something that needs to be addressed every 60 to 70,000 miles. If you have a 1.8 turbo or 2.0 turbo Gen 3 engine found from about 2015 and later, these engines do not have carbon buildup issues, and it's very uncommon to find buildup at all on those cars. Additionally, the oil and fuel quality in your car have a big impact on the carbon buildup that can happen. This is a Gen 3 engine, again, not common to have carbon buildup. With 146,000 miles, this car was impeccably maintained, and the carbon buildup on this engine at that high mileage is barely there at all. So let's look at a car that was not well maintained. This is a Gen 3 1.8T engine. Again, not common to have carbon buildup issues. This car was purchased by Nathan, our video guy, and it had 70,000 miles at the time of purchase. The Carfax said it was from a rural area, and it seemed like it had missed some oil changes, and likely they used exceptionally low quality oil and extended those oil changes far too long. You can see this Golf 1.8T engine with 80,000 miles is worse than a Mark 7 GTI that was well maintained with 146,000 miles. It's worth noting that Nathan's car, now it has 120,000 miles. And you can see the delta between the carbon buildup of those is not significant. And that is because he uses good quality fuel, 93 octane because he's tuned, and he uses Liquamai oil. You can purchase it at shoptap.com. Buy it. They're sponsoring a build that's coming soon. It's top secret, but it's gonna be pretty dope. Now let's talk about additional preventative options. First, let's cut it out with the Italian tune-up stuff. An Italian tune-up is the idea that revving the living shit out of your engine, like a teenager who just got his license, will prevent carbon from building up on your valves. If you believe that, you probably also believe that a Naruto run during a rainstorm will prevent you from getting wet. As we showed with our previous video, introducing chemicals into your intake are not a fix once the carbon has built up. They are, however, a possible preventative. So things like seafoam or that Berryman product we use in that can be something you use every 15 or 20,000 miles maybe, to try to make sure that carbon does not build up over time. 
Don't go running one of those services through your engine every oil change, you'll probably end up killing your cat. A catch can is something that can help slow carbon buildup on your intake valves. It does this by removing deposits that are coming through your PCV system before they get sent back into your intake to be burned. This is unlikely to be a permanent fix for your issue and it will likely only slow things down. In addition to that, it introduces a new issue of having to maintain your catch can and drain it every so often. And let's be honest, most people, including myself, are either too busy or too lazy to maintain their car in general. So adding another thing to maintain, probably not a great idea. And other people mention water methanol as a possible solution. This is designed for engine performance and the kits cost around 500 bucks and there are a lot of work to install. To me, it makes no sense to buy a kit that's 500 bucks then pay somebody a lot of money to install that costs more to install than the fixing this problem that you're trying to solve in the first place. The only real way to fix this problem is by manually scraping and or blasting the valves. Now to do that, you want to take the intake manifold off your car for the Volkswagen Audi world. We have a DIY on the TSI intake manifold that we did with our friend Charles, the home mechanic of almost a decade ago now. It's very old and much less gray hair. I also made a water pump video on Nathan's car, which I showed removing the intake manifold there. So we have a TSI and an MQB DIY for both intake manifold removals. Now, if you don't wanna do any of those things because you're lazy or your hands are made of hams, our shops can do them for you, both in our North Carolina location as well as our Ohio location. We'll link to our shop site where you can schedule an appointment in the description below. In addition to that, we've put together some kits with the chemical scrapers for doing this job for those cars, including the gaskets. So Justin removed the intake manifold for this car so we can do an inspection for the carbon cleaning. Here are our four cylinders and here's cylinder one with 120,000 miles on it. And here is cylinder one when we documented it previously with around 80,000 miles on it. Here's cylinder two with 120. Here's cylinder two with 80. Here's cylinder three with 120. Here's cylinder three with 80. Here's cylinder four with 120,000 miles. And here's cylinder four with 80,000 miles. There are a lot of methods for cleaving carbon off of intake valves. The guys at our shop use this valve clean before they do carbon cleaning because it makes the carbon come off the valves way easier regardless of what method you're using. Because there are four cylinders, we're gonna try four different methods to show you different ways you can do this. So cylinder one and two are both gonna be media blasted. The only difference is gonna be cylinder two is gonna get valve clean soaked. Cylinder one is not, we're going in dry. Cylinder three, we're gonna pour our valve clean in and then we're gonna scrape it with picks and brushes to try to get it as clean as possible. And cylinder four, we're gonna soak with valve clean and then use the zip tie method to clean that off. So these are in all of your cylinders. They need to be pulled out and cleaned. Justin used a method of razor blade, wire brush, then he brake cleans the rest of everything off until they look nice and fancy like this. You have to turn your engine to make sure the valves are all closed across the engine. Now, in our particular instance, three cylinders are closed. Cylinder one is currently open. So what you do is you take a socket like this, 24 millimeter, we'll link to it, shoptap.com. You put it on the crank right here and then you rotate it around clockwise until you get the valves all the way closed on the cylinders you're working with. Well, after the guys let the valve clean soak, they scrape manually to kind of break as much as they can up, regardless of whether they're doing it manually or with a media blaster. So to go straight down, work your way around in a circle, in the circles, like that. And stop the sides on the second hole. Do the same thing. So the way Justin cleans the carbon on this is he goes around the lower valve seat with a straight pick, and then he uses the hook pick to go up and down the shaft of the valve and then clean the upper part where it goes into the head. You have to be careful with the valve seal up top. So the guys at the shop use these long picks. I also did test with these shorter picks. They will reach, but it's not nearly as good as the long picks. We offer a version of short picks like this. Uh, you may wanna try to look in to get some long picks if you really want it to be exactly perfect. Now that Justin knocked a major carbon off those valves, we're gonna suck out the valve clean and those big carbon bits and we're gonna use the media blaster to get it perfectly clean. In this case, we're gonna be using baking soda. Other people are gonna use walnut blasting. Either way, media blasting is what we use in our shop because it's the best way to get the best results possible and the cleanest actual engine. Here we have the media blasting results in cylinder one. You can see here's the before and after. We did not soak this cylinder with valve clean. Here's the results for cylinder two. We did soak this cylinder with valve clean, then we media blasted it, and as you can see, 
This looks exactly how it would have come off the factory line, absolutely perfect, and this is the best method for cleaning valves on your engine. One of the things that they told me from the shop was that it's going to be about a similar amount of time and similar results with and without valve cleaning when you're actually media blasting. The major valve clean difference is sometimes it will be easier to scrape the stuff off and kind of get the bulk of it off as opposed to media blast afterwards. Now we're gonna clean cylinder three with picks. So this is what we did with our other cylinder. We're gonna break up the carbon, the major carbon with this pick, and then we're gonna suck out the valve clean and that big carbon. Once we get that sucked out to make this properly clean, we need to use now brake clean and continue to scrape to get all of that extra stuff off. So we're gonna be brake cleaning, scraping, sucking out, brake cleaning, scraping, sucking out. Rinse and repeat until it's clean to your liking. And if we look, it's actually quite a bit cleaner, but there's still kind of some chunks and some spots that we gotta get, get out of there. So you rinse and repeat, brake clean, picks until you've gotten everything off that you're happy with, and then here's the end result. Wow, take a look at all that pick work. So the people on the internet say to use zip ties as a hack. So we're gonna find out today, hack or whack. So we take a drill, put the zip ties in the drill, and then we spin her around inside the cylinder, clean it up, that's the theory. I don't know, I'm gonna cut them right here because that seems about right for me. That's, I, I should have held the other side. This is the side that should be on the floor because I'm not using it. Instead of me having to pick up all those pieces <laughs> and put them inside. So we stick them in the drill, tighten our drill down. Theory is you stick it in there and then you spin it around like that and it cleans them out. I have no idea if it's gonna work at all. <laughs> so here is our before, we zip it up. Again, you can't really do a lot of harm here because it's all metal. So it's like, as long as you don't get anything up into that valve seat, not a lot of harm you can do here as long as you don't go like a complete maniac. I'm losing zippies left and right here. <laughs> they're, they're, they're just hanging around inside there. I'm gonna clean that out with brake clean and we're gonna reassess how good our first zip went. My assessment of the zip method is, I would say it's pretty good, hack. I would call it a hack, not whack. Cuts down the time and the scraping you gotta do and how like, much you have to pay attention. You kinda just stick it in there and you know, zing it around, get it, move it around a bunch of places. It's not perfect. You probably have to do some scraping still manually, but but remember, we did use that valve clean first, which helps soften a lot of this, and we scraped off the major chunks beforehand. I thought cutting these shorter was actually gonna be better because that it wouldn't like spread out when you start the drill. I think it's actually probably better if you cut them a little longer so you can get deeper in there and not have the drill kind of all up in the cylinder head. You have a little bit more to work with in terms of angles. So to recap our cleaning, you can see cylinder one and two where we media blast, much cleaner looking looks perfect. So in a three and four, not perfect, but the major obstruction, all the major material is removed. You're gonna gain fuel mileage. You're gonna get better performance. You're gonna get rid of those cold start misfires. It's still gonna solve your problem. Is it as good looking as the other cylinders? No. Is it good enough that I think it's just as good? Pretty much. So if you're not up for this task, you can take it to one of our shops or a Volkswagen Audi specialty shop like ours. If you wanna DIY it, we have those kits available, which we will link to in the description below. We also have those videos that allow you to do it yourself. But, you know, good luck with that.